All right, welcome, and today we're going over connective tissue histology, which will be with us for the entire course, so it's best to get this down now good. If you really want to go the extra mile and buy the Michael LaBeouf book, uh, that's, I, I do, it's, it's a good thing to get, right? But this site right here will kind of replace that. This is Southern Illinois University School of Medicine, so it's kind of pathology, centered and I don't use the images from this for that we use histologyguide.org but this has great descriptions right so if you go to this site which is there's a link on my page right to start off with here there's this introduction page and we could go to this basic tissue types right and then you could click on any of these right? if you want to click on epithelial they have a little study guide there that'll kind of provide the more lecture based kind of content for what we're looking at right there. All right, but we're gonna look at connective tissue here. And again, it's gonna give you an overview. It's gonna talk a little about, it's gonna talk about the locations, the components, right? what are the cells and what are the types, what are the functions, right? So again, this is a little more of a lecture type material here. For the lab, we're gonna go to that histology site. So I, I do recommend reading these. They have some great stuff in here as far as um, the lecture component and also for your people in health field right here um, if you're dealing with any kind of diseases inflammation is always almost always a major component of these symptoms and, and problems with any kind of disease right and so when they, when they say connective tissue is the stage for inflammation kind of think about that in relation to how that loose connective tissue is supporting the epithelial tissue right or around all those organs and where where's all the blood vessels right because that's where that inflammation response is going to occur right so i'm going to look at two slides this is last week this is called uh, that pavement epithelial where you're looking down on what are the simple squamous cells right and this is a slice from a organ or structure called a mesentery. And we're gonna look at it really close. And you're gonna see an epithelial construction, right? All the cells are connected to each other, right over here. And the reason we talked last week about all these nuclei over here is that this is a very thin layer and you can see underneath it. And so underneath it, if it's an epithelial layer, you're gonna have some kind of loose connective tissue, right? So we're gonna to go to this slide, which looks kind of the same, and zoom in on and see what was underneath those simple squamous cells, right? Here are the simple squamous cells all connected to each other, forming that sheet. Underneath is gonna be where the loose connective tissue is right here, right? And in this case, those are all those nuclei you kind of saw over here most likely, right? And so all these nuclei belong to what are called fibroblasts. Right over here, those are the main components of connective tissue, right? So in general, if I ask you, what is this cell? And you could recognize as connective tissue proper, then the answer is fibroblasts. There are other cells in there like this. It's kind of hard to make out. I won't ask you about it, but these are like uh, mass cells right over here. Right, that kind of uh, release histamine and stuff in response to an inflammation, right? But mostly the cells are gonna be these fibroblasts as far as this class is concerned, right? So the other components of the connective tissue, which you could see right here, is all this red junk in the background that you could see, right? This, there are collagen fibers. These are collagen fibers. And because this is a loose connective tissue, they're kind of laid out in single strands right here. Like this is like a textbook loose connective tissue picture. Those big, thick red fibers right here are collagen fibers. And then the thin ones over here are elastic fibers, right? So these are the two main fibers that we're going to run into over and over again in our connective tissue, collagen and elastin fibers. So for those fibers, you know, I want to just point out, I want to just make it clear, all this, again, is in the lecture videos. Um, but, you know, for those fibers, those are the really only two 
that will generally be able to identify. The other one is reticular, which will be in specific organs. But uh, collagen is going to be all over the place. Anytime you see this big complicated mess right here, uh, it's a bunch of collagen fibers right here. And then elastin fibers usually have to be particularly stained to be able to, for them to come out right there, right? So we'll see these in, uh, in black right here, these, these long stringy ones are elastic fiber, elastin fibers, elastin protein making up the elastic fibers. And then down here, these big, large red fibers are the collagen fibers, okay? So we'll go over all these histology slides. We'll go over the entire lab in a minute, but I just want to kind of bring that out because the important point, these are very important lecture type points, is that when you're talking about the properties, the mechanical properties of this connective tissue proper, it'll be for the most part due to these um, fibers within them, right? And so what elastin molecules are gonna do for you is give you the ability to stretch like a rubber band, and then it'll store that energy and it'll bounce back to its original shape, right? So stretch and recoil, right? This will be very important when we get to uh, every, almost every tissue, this is gonna be like a, any tissue that's moving around a lot, right? Your muscle fibers, uh, your muscle tissue has a lot of elasticity in them. Your lung tissue, when you expand your lungs, right, uh, they're surrounded by these elastic fibers and they're gonna store that energy and you allow it to recoil, right? Your arteries have a lot of elastic fibers in them so that when they expand, when they're being pushed blood through them, right, they're gonna kind of expand, store that energy and then recoil and push that blood further along, right? So elasticity is a big deal, right? And like a rubber band, if you leave a rubber band out in the sun, it kind of breaks down and when you stretch it, it just breaks. That's what happens to you when you get old, especially if you have a lot of sun damage, right? So elastic fiber breakdown is a major component of a lot of the uh, things that happen to you when you get old, a lot of the bad things, right? So, and with collagen molecules, what they're gonna provide is tensile strength, the ability to withstand pull, right? So if you're trying to pull a rope, right? What'll happen is it'll pull the other object that can be moved rather than stretch out, right? So collagen fibers are gonna be resistance against pull. And depending on how they're arranged, will determine what that type of resistance is, right? If they're all arranged in parallel arrangement, like my fingers right here, right? you could pull it in one direction, it'll be super strong, right? That's the nature of your tendons and ligaments. You could feel that right over here, right on the back of your hands or on the front, those are all, like, those are all tendons right there, right? And that, you could feel them, you can feel they kind of move around. They're not quite bone, but they're very, they're a very definite structure to them, right? Whereas dense irregular is going to be like, instead of like this, it's gonna be kind of like this, right? It's gonna be going in all directions, but that'll give you the ability to withstand resistance in all different directions, right? So that'll be those surroundings of the muscle in between the muscle resistance against pull, right? So for these two, the reason you could take your skin, pull it up, right? And it won't rip off you is because of the collagen, right? The reason it bounces back, especially in you young folks, is because of the elasticity, right? All those properties are conferring. And this is all because of the underlying dermis, right? In your skin right here, right? You can see these elastic fibers, you pull on these, they're gonna be stretched and then bounce back, right? And this is what's providing the sort of toughness and resistance against pull, right? And the last thing I wanna mention, and this is a little bit maybe moving ahead toward the blood system, but, and this is very important in physiology, right? The fact that especially your loose connective tissue uh, holds a lot of water, right? It's a very sort of viscous ground substance that retains and attracts and retains water um, when we talk about your, when you get into your interstitial fluid, right, uh, this is where a lot of that interstitial fluid is held, right, in the sort of gelatinous matrix of your loose connective tissue surrounding the cells and organs, right, over there. So when you talk about your fluid body compartments, this is where it's being held right there. So when you're dehydrated, you know, you lose water in your 
intercellular fluid and your interstitial fluid, right? It takes a while for you after you've drinking 10 cups of water, it kind of takes a while to get into your body tissues, right? And this is kind of one reason why. It's not just in your blood, right, that you're thirsty. All right. I don't know if that made any sense to anybody, but there you go. That's a sort of uh, background knowledge of the histology. And so what we want to do next is go and look at lab three. So here we are with our histology of connective tissue, right? And we'll talk a little bit about this here. And in the case of, until you get to bones, really, this isn't a big important, whether it's a cross or longitudinal section. And you know, where it's found, this is more of like a lecture type thing, right? For this one, we're gonna be looking at these connective tissue propers. So I gave you a couple samples here for each one. And for each sample, you're gonna to have to identify the tissue and a couple of things within it. In this case, collagen or elastic or fibroblasts. And I gave you two slides for this. Both of them are in chapter 11, the skin rather than the epithelial because we may as well look at this since we're gonna to have to do it again anyway when we get to the skin lectures. To the slide box, chapter 11, the skin. And I gave you this one. The reason I gave you this one, it has the elastic fibers stained for it. So that's a nice, this is the one I showed you before, right? This has, it has two uh, different samples right here. Uh, this one and number one right here. And then there's also a second page that are gonna have the, what's called the Verha stain that stains the elastic fibers black, right? So the reason I gave you uh, this as a sample of loose connective tissue is you could kind of see there's a boundary here right, where it changes from one type of, you could see the kind of, I don't know, structure, right? How it goes from one type of tissue to another type, right? And just by eyeball, you wouldn't know necessarily that that's loose connective tissue and that this is dense until you kind of get, develop an eye for it, right? But what you want to notice is that this is an epithelial boundary and that you're going to go from an epithelial boundary where the cells are all connected together in a sheet to a connective tissue boundary where the cells are seen as scattered around, right? And they're going to be filled in between with a matrix. In this case, collagen fibers is what you can see. So you can't make out any elastic fibers in the, all the red stuff we're just going to assume is collagen fibers. And when you go down a little deeper, this is going from what's called the papillary layer of the dermis to the reticular layer. You're going to see this change over here, these big thick bundles over here of collagen, right? And that's the nature of the difference between loose and dense connective tissue. You get more collagen and they come in bundles. All right, but let's go to the second slide because these stand out a little bit more because they're kind of separated by this kind of line of elastic fibers. All right, so you can kind of see how it's going from this structure that's sitting right underneath the epithelial boundary and then go a little deeper and then you get to this different type of subtype of tissue right there. All right, so one of the things to recognize is the epithelial boundary and sitting just by location, even if you couldn't recognize anything else, that is a loose connective tissue right there because that's what's going to be sitting on, on right underneath the epithelial bed, right? This is what makes it one of the most ubiquitous uh, tissues in the body, this loose connective tissue, because you're, you're going to find it anywhere where there's, it's going to be surrounding the cells or underlying epithelial tissue. Right? And then we get to this kind of layer here where all these elastic fibers, which you can identify as elastic fibers just from your knowledge of looking at this. And you can't really see individual collagen fibers on this one right here, here until you get down to the dense irregular, right? So that is just by location, you could tell that this is loose connective tissue. So let's go back to another sample that you have, which is this MHS 235 one. 
This is one you've looked at for the stratified squamous keratinized sample right here. Right, that's your skin. This is the, the thick skin. And you can make out the epithelial boundary. I mean, the epithelial layer. Over here, these are the nuclei. And if you look really closely, you can kind of see they're all connected together. And then you come to this other layer here, right, which is your loose connective tissue. And I like this sample just because you could actually see the individual strands of collagen. And again, the analogy would be, these strands would be like individual hairs, right? So you can think of fibers like an individual hair, they'd be kind of loosely arranged out here, maybe like sitting in water or something. Whereas you move down over here and they're bundles, right? Like a ponytail or a braid or something like that, right? So that's how you're gonna to wanna to kind of identify the difference between loose, like this, and then dense, irregular. And you won't see the elastic fibers here because they're not stained. Okay, so epithelial, and then you get to connective tissue, loose connective tissue, and then the cells here, again, there might be a lot of blood vessels going through. There probably is white blood cells of some sort, mast cells and stuff, but what I'm gonna ask you is what type of cell is this? and you're going to say fibroblast, if you want to get it correct. So that's your loose connective tissue sample. Any questions on that? With the fibroblast, elastic fibers, and collagen in one of these. And then you can look at the cartoon figures as well. All right, so that's your main type of loose connective tissue you can actually call areolar tissue, loose connective tissue interchangeably. That's the most common type the most abundant tissue in your body probably, right? Whereas these other types of main loose connective tissue are we'll name by name, right? Adipose and reticular tissue. So for that, which slide did I use? I believe I used another skin sample. Yeah, I used the MH90. And here this is somewhere on your body. Again, I might've used this can't remember if I use this one for a stratified squamous keratinized up here, right? Sitting right underneath it would be loose. And then you're gonna to go to a dense. And then for skin, you're gonna have this, what's called a subcutaneous fat, right? So you're gonna go deep to that. And all of a sudden it starts looking something like this, right? It's not a bunch of scattered cells, all the cells, are kind of pushed together. They're not connected in a way that epithelial cells are connected, but they are, it is pretty cellular, right? It's not, they don't really have a whole lot of extracellular matrix, unlike every other type of connective tissue. So this is adipose tissue. All this is a really thick layer of adipose tissue, right? So what you're looking at is this big space. This is a processing artifact. Right? But this would be the adipose cell. There would be lipid in it. That's all been removed from the processing, but this is the nucleus of that adipose cell or an, or an, an adipose cell, right? So it's got this kind of structure, adipose tissue. This right here is a little bit clearer. You can make out the cell membranes a little bit easier, but that's another type of adipose tissue. Right. And then the next, next one is very localized to a couple of your soft organs uh, for, for the most part. That is reticular fibers. And that'll go back to our connective tissue slide box, chapter three. And we're gonna go to the spleen sample, right? So your liver, your spleen, all those really super soft organs, they have a bunch of cells that are doing the work for them or your lymph node, right? And they need a kind of framework to sit in All right, so in these white spaces here would be the functional cells of the spleen that do whatever, right? And surrounding them, kind of supporting them are these what are called reticular fibers. Right? These are type of thin collagen fibers actually that are gonna provide this network for the cells to give them a little bit of structure in there. And the reason you're, you're not gonna say these are 
elastin fibers are just based on your particular knowledge of this slide that I'm giving you, 293 spleen, right, as well as the kind of overall, they usually are a little bit more networky, right, a little more web, a little bit more connecting than the elastin fibers. All right, so that's your reticular fibers. So that's your loose connective tissue, the three subtypes. The main one that we're going to run into over and over again is this loose connective tissue and what you have to identify there. All right, so then we're going to go to dense connective tissue. And the samples I gave you for this were, right, we're going to go to this, which is highly specialized or rather highly localized connective tissue. Right, unlike dense, irregular, and loose connective tissue, this has a very definite structure. Again, if you feel like your tendons over here, or on the back of your hand right here, or on the back of your heel, this is all made of this dense, regular connective tissue, right? It's stained red. In a real sample, it comes out white, right? A very white, collagenous fibers. And it's also white because there's no blood vessels to speak of, at least any large ones running through this tissue. So. Dent, tendons and ligaments are poorly vascularized, unlike a lot of most other connective tissues. It's poorly vascularized. They have small capillaries running through it, but that'll relate to tendons and ligaments' poor ability to heal. Structurally speaking, right, the collagen fibers, again, are all arranged in a bundle. Right? You have big bundles, and they're all arranged in parallel with each other. Right? Again, if my fingers were collagen bundles, right, they're going to be arranged kind of if you look at them this way, they'll look like this. If you did a cross section, they'd all look like this right there, right? So they're all arranged in parallel and they're very strong and resisting pull forces against you know, that resistance against in that one direction. So they're gonna pull when your muscle contracts, right? it's gonna pull on these tendons and they're gonna actually, what makes those bones move because this is what's gonna be actually attached directly to the bone, right? So these are your dense regular connective tissue, right? And you'll see, the only other things you'll see in here are these fibroblasts that are interspersed within them, usually these elongated ones right here. These actually might be something else or the fibroblasts of other types, All right? So these long ones that I point out to in here will be a fibroblast. So that's your tendons and ligaments and they're composed of dense regular Whereas your dense irregular are a little like your loose, your areolar tissue and the fact that we're gonna find that everywhere, right? And so we're gonna go back to the skin slide, skin chapter 11 and look at these two slides, right? And we're gonna look for fibroblasts. You know, we're gonna look for the tissue, if identify it as dense irregular and look for these two fibers or the cell. Skin slide box, skin. 235, again, we're gonna go back to that. This is a really nice sample for a lot of things, right? Your stratified squamous keratinized, and then the loose connective tissue stands out pretty good with those single strands. And then you're gonna go down deeper and start to get to it where you can see that structural change. Now, there's a lot of junk in here. These are like hair follicles, blood vessels, glands, right? But what we're looking at really is this dense, irregular connective tissue, right? So you can see these bundles, right? These long strands versus what you see up here, these single strands, right? And that's dense, irregular. And the fact that you could see them as opposed to dense, regular, all going in one direction, the dense, irregular is gonna be going all in different directions, right? When you take a slice, cut of it, they're all running in parallel and cross sections right there so that whichever direction this pulled on, there's some resistance against pulling every single direction, right? So these are fibers running one way. And then down here, these are fibers running the opposite way, right? That's how you want to think of that. That's dense, irregular connective tissue. And these are all these, you could see that this is mostly the smaller blood vessels and stuff. Down here, you got all these big structures because this provides a lot more support, right? Not that you have to identify them yet, but blood vessels, glands, hair cells, right? These are all kind of firmly embedded in this dense, irregular connective tissue right there. So that's your dense, irregular. Looks like a mess here, but you want to kind of point, look for those 
collagen fibers. And then any cell I ask you about here, it's not going to be a blood vessel. You know, it's not going to be anything else. It's going to be a fibroblast, right? Even if it isn't, that's what it is. All right, so these are good, good practice. They'll be useful when we get to skin, right? Because we're going to look at all this again when we get to skin, and they'll be really easy for you. What else do we have? We had one last one. These are the elastic tissue, which is really a kind of maybe a dense combination, dense regular, dense irregular with a lot of elastic fibers in them. Yeah. So on this slide, this has a couple different stainings right here. And what you got in the middle of this mess right here is an artery and a vein right here, right, which are the arteries are what's going to contain a lot of uh, elastic fibers. So we're going to go to the one that stains, not one, not two, but number three right here, the one that actually stains for elastic fibers. Right here. We're going to focus in on this artery right here. You can kind of click and it'll zoom in on that one sample. So this is kind of, you know, we, when we get into blood vessels, we'll talk about this particular band right here, which is made up of elastic fibers. This, this allows the ability to, for the artery to kind of expand with a pulse of blood and then recoil back, right? It's like a rubber band surrounding it. And you got two of these. Those are elastic fibers. The elastic tissue itself is surrounding the entire blood vessel. Right, so you have collagen fibers as well, because it's kind of like a dense connective tissue, but then you got all these elastic fibers interspersed within them, which is going to allow for a lot of easy expansion, right? The muscle tissue in here, which you don't know about yet, also has a lot of elastic fiber, all these little squiggly black lines right there. Right, but this is providing elasticity to the artery. And again, when you get old, you start breaking down, your arteries become more hard and brittle and break like an old rubber band. That's elastic fibers. This is elastic tissue right here. All right, last one is unrelated to those connective tissue proper,s but I don't know how else to put it. This lab 3A2, uh, this is a connect blood. It's technically a, it was officially a connective tissue. Chapter seven, peripheral blood. All right, so we're gonna go down here to chapter seven, peripheral blood. And you know, it's a fluid connective tissue. Uh, the cells are the red, white uh, blood cells, right? And the extracellular matrix, as it were, the plasma, that's a fluid and it's the plasma, right? Basically a, a plasma, right? And this, that's the nature. So the matrix, so-called matrix is a fluid, the plasma, the cells and stuff in it are the formed elements, right? So we're gonna go down to this last one, the review one, has all the stuff labeled. And then what you're looking at from afar is just a bunch of red blood cells for the most part. All right, so you got the red blood cells. These are carrying hemoglobin, which carries the oxygen. They don't have a nucleus, right? So they just present as this kind of red oval shape right here or convex shape right here, right? There's no nucleus in them uh, because they, they're, they only live for a couple months and all they do is transport hemoglobin for the most part and carbon dioxide to some extent. So that's what your red blood cells are. And then these little dots right here that you see, these little purple dots right here are the platelets. And what platelets are a little bit of like pieces of kind of cell membrane wrapped up in there. They float around the blood and they help, uh, they form the clotting elements when you do have some kind of breach in that epithelial of your blood vessel. So those are red blood cells, those are platelets. And then you have anything else that you see in here that has a nucleus. Right? You can spot them from way off. This, 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 this. These are all different types of white blood cells. There are different types. You don't have to know the particular types. All you got to know is that they are white blood cells. And so red blood cell, white blood cell, platelet. So the white blood cells are going to have a nuclei. They are very active. You know, they're, they're doing all sorts of things. So that's how you, I mean, it's, that's pretty simple, I think.
So those are your connective tissue proper. And one of the problems with this whole tissue is that they're not really that distinct as opposed to say bone tissue or epithelial tissue. So it takes a bit of an eye to kind of recognize them. And in your exercises, I ask you to draw these and people often comment, then what am I drawing here? So maybe instead of drawing these, you'll want to take screenshots of the histologyguide.org slides and make your own list or group of pictures that you can study from, labeling all these components. Adipose tissue will be these big spaces. You can see the little nuclei usually in most of the slices. Reticular tissue has those short fibers branched, connected with each other, and you want to look at the very particular sample that I gave you and distinguish it from elastic tissue. Dense regular, you'll want to recognize collagen bundles running in parallel with a couple of elongated purple nuclei within it. Elastic tissue, for instance, in this picture right here, has not been particularly stained for elastin, but in all the pictures I assigned for connective tissue, the elastic fibers are stained black, right? So you'll wanna recognize that amongst all the collagen fibers. And right? so the last two, are the more ubiquitous and the more difficult ones, right? Areolar tissue and dense irregular tissue. So these are going to be found everywhere in our, the systems that we study. We're gonna see it in the dermis right over here. We're going to see it how it organizes the muscle tissue and the nerve tissue in a similar way. We're gonna see the linings of the gut tube, the respiratory tract, and the blood vessels. Right, so these let loose connective and dense irregular connective tissue are going to be constant throughout the course. So drawing things, something like the areolar tissue may not help you, it just helps to recognize it in relation to epithelial tissue and to distinguish it from dense irregular connective tissue. Right, so the dense irregular connective tissue in this case, even the drawing here doesn't seem to help, but you'll just want to recognize these, which are usually red. You're going to want to see these longitudinal bundles over here, as opposed to the cross-section views you'll see all over here. So you'll want to recognize those longitudinal versus the cross-sectional views, and you'll want to distinguish it from the loose connective tissue where these will not be in bundles, but rather in single strands if you're able to recognize it. All right, so I realize that a lot of these are difficult to recognize histologically, but the better you are able to recognize them now, the easier time you'll have later in the class.